exception of Jennifer and Eric's parents, would all of you be seated? And for the parents of Jennifer and Eric, I ask this question. The marriage of Jennifer and Eric brings together two different families, two unique storylines, so a new chapter in their lives can begin to unfold. Though this relationship was formed out of the love these two have found in each other, their marriage will ultimately be blessed by the support of their families. And so I ask, who stands with this woman to symbolize her family's support of this union? Excellent. And who stands with this man to symbolize his family's support of this union? Wonderful parents, kindly please be seated. As Eric and I were walking up the aisle, I turned to him and I said, well, are you ready for this? He said, for six years, for six years I've been ready for this. Jennifer and Eric have requested to take a brief moment of silence to acknowledge and love our deceased loved ones. We are gathered here today to celebrate one of life's greatest moments, the joining of two hearts. And in this ceremony today, we will witness the joining of Jennifer Ishida and Eric Basco in marriage. For them, out of the ordinary, the extraordinary has happened. They met. <laughs> they fell in love. And here we are today to celebrate this union. Of course, it's not just a celebration for these two lovebirds, it's a celebration for the rest of us, because when this is all said and done, we get to drink. <laughs> Romance is fun, but true love is something far more. And it is their desire to love each other for life, and that is what we are celebrating today. If there is anyone present who has just cause why this couple should not be united, you can just keep that to yourself. So let's get on with this already. A good marriage must be created. In marriage, it's the little things that are the big things. It's never being too serious to hold hands. It's remembering to say, I love you at least once a day. It's never going to sleep angry. It's standing together and facing the word world. It's speaking words of appreciation and demonstrating gratitude in thoughtful ways every day. It's having the capacity to forgive and forget. And it's giving each other an atmosphere in which you can both thrive and grow as individuals as well as a couple. It's the common search for the good and the beautiful. Most importantly, it's not just marrying the right partner, it's being the right partner. I so enjoyed meeting this couple. I've, I've titled their love story, The Model Relationship. <laughs> they met at Pikes Peak Community College. Uh, a friend was building their photography portfolio and uh, these two were literally the models for that portfolio. Jenny had a quirky kind of style, she tells me. Uh, and there, there was a school bus picture uh, you, you remarked about where you were wearing neon green bunny ears upside down sunglasses and a hoodie with a bunny tail, doing that thumbs up pose, I love it, I love it. Eric, on the other hand, was dark. Goth clothes, fishnet shirt, brooding eyes. Their photos were taken separately, they didn't actually meet on the shoot, and then Jenny gets the CD with all the photos on it, and she sees this dark, mysterious man, and she thinks, who is this guy? Well, not long, why would she want to be with him? Not long after that, Jenny spots him on campus. She tells me that she was intimidated by the scowl on his face. <laughs> of course, Eric also saw her before meeting her. She, uh, he happened to see her on campus and he tells me that he was instantly smitten, captivated by her eyes from 30 feet away. Eric felt she had the most caring, and hospitable eyes ever. Eyes that would make the world a better place. His first reaction was, I want her to be in my life somehow. Well, they finally met. They began chatting. They discovered a lot of common interests. Fat Boy Slim, 
VNV Nation, their first concerts. And then they discovered more in common. Well, see, Jennifer is half Japanese and Eric is not, but he always had a love for Asian culture. Jennifer always wanted to learn to speak Japanese. And guess what? Eric did speak Japanese. So he taught her her mother language. Jenny jokes that he's the whitest Japanese guy on the planet. <laughs> they seemed a perfect, perfect match. However, there was one little um, thing to work out. Jennifer had a boyfriend. <laughs> The thing is, she discovered she could talk to Eric about anything. In fact, they would get into trouble in class that they shared for paying more attention to one another than to what was going on in the class. This went on for a long time, but Eric is a patient man and a great lister, listener and an empathizer. He didn't push his agenda. He was there for Jenny while she was oblivious to him. Six months goes by, and Eric finally decides it's time to confess my love. So he put on those brooding eyes, and he confesses his love to her, just pours it all out. And what does Jenny do? She totally friend zones him. Eric, I like you so much. You're such a good friend. Yeah, ouch is right. Not only that, she says, you know, I kind of see you as a sibling. And I don't want our friendship to end. So what did Eric do? He ran. No. He thought to himself, that's okay, I'll wait. Well, he didn't have to wait too long. They had their first date, his graduation dinner, about a month later, and Jenny changed her mind. She saw him get out of the car to come and get her. He was wearing a white shirt. She saw him with new eyes, and she thought, yo, this guy's a hottie. <laughs> they went to dinner, they had sushi, yeah, something like that. She only had the California rolls before this, but that night, Eric began to open up new worlds to her, and she ate the entire sushi dinner. He won her heart that night. Eric proposed on November 11, 2011, 11, 11, 11. He chose that date because he knew he could remember it. <laughs> and she said yes, and here we are. Jennifer and Eric are models of the deepest kind of love, I think. True friends who have become one true love. And so, this couple has prepared vows for one another. Eric, I'm gonna ask you to go first. It was your eyes that caught me. It was the future I saw in them the change I saw in this world needed bestowed behind each lens. It was at that moment I knew that this woman would be important in my life. I knew that she would change it, but I did not know how. I know I wanted her to be my friend, but I did not know she would become my best friend. I knew that she would make changes, we would make changes in our friends, in our families, and in our futures. I did not know it would be together like this. My irrevocable love is yours. It is because of you I can give my love freely. You helped me find my reason to progress and my ability to change this planet for the better. You found in me the strength to never settle for less, to play life on hard mode, and say yes even when life tries to say no. I give to you my ears so that you may talk whenever you need someone to listen. I give to you my strength so that I may carry you in the times you fall from your aspirations. If I had more to give than myself, it would be yours. Let us show this world the love we share for each other. Jennifer. I told you once when we were just friends that someday you would make some very lucky woman a most wonderful husband. How blessed I am to know that the lucky woman would be me. I will never take that for granted. And in our, t our continued journey together, I promise these things to you. I will be an unending fountain of love and positivity. I will nurture our marriage with laughter and kindness. I will embrace the challenges and changes in our lives. I will pursue adventure with you with courage and excitement. I will listen to you with an open heart, uh, with an open mind, and speak to you with an open heart. I will forgive you for your mistakes, as you always have for mine. 
I will trust and have faith in you and support you in your endeavors. I will travel the world with you and delight in helping you achieve your dreams. I will continue working to become a better person and will challenge you to do the same. I will be ever grateful for the life that we have, but always work towards a better future. You are all that I have ever wanted. You are my best friend, my lover, my companion for life. I promise you my heart, body, and soul, today and always. And you can count on my love, integrity, and faithfulness until the end of time. Jennifer and Eric, I would ask that you always treat yourself and each other with respect and remind yourselves often of what brought you together today. Give the highest priority to the tenderness, the gentleness, and the kindness that your marriage deserves. When frustration and difficulty assault your marriage as they do every relationship, focus on what still seems right between the two of you, not just what's going crazy. This way, when the clouds of trouble hide the sun in your lives, you will know that that sun's going to break through any minute. And if each of you take responsibility for the quality of your life together, it will be marked by abundance and happiness. Do we have the rings? Eric, if you would hold Jennifer's ring. Jennifer, if you would hold Eric's ring. The ring is a beautiful symbol. It's an unbroken circle of love. It has no beginning. It has no end. And you're going to wear these rings, and there will be days you will look at this ring on your finger, and you will be ecstatic. You'll be, oh my gosh, I'm married. And there will be other days when you will need to look at the ring on your finger and just remember, oh my gosh, I'm married. So Eric, as you place the ring on Jennifer's finger, please repeat after me. I offer my vow to you in the form of this ring so that my word and my love so that the, my word and my love will always be with you will always be with you close to my heart close to my heart and Jennifer as you place the ring on Eric's finger please repeat after me I offer my vow to you in the form of this ring I offer my vow to you in the form of this ring so that my word and my love so that my word and my love will always be with you will always be with you close to your heart Jennifer and Eric have chosen to plant a tree in honor of their union together and Eric wrote some beautiful words they asked me to embellish on it but I'm not going to because they were perfect the blossom of a relationship is like an acorn forged from the care of its planters in the summer, that seed will grow as the love from these two flourish. In the fall, that seed will be covered by the blanket of their care for each other and the bond they have formed. In the winter, that seed will scar. The couple is bound to argue, but they shall not let the brittle cold destroy the life they have made. In spring, this seed will break the ground as the two unite in matrimony. As they nurture their marriage, they too shall grow. As this tree matures, each shall mature and discover more about themselves and each other. A canopy will provide them shelter from storms, hardships, and their love will aid those in its embrace and in growing their own love. So Jennifer and Eric. To make your relationship work will take love. This is the core of your marriage and why you are here today. It will take trust to know that in your hearts you truly want what's best for one another. It will take dedication to stay open to one another and to learn and grow together. It will take faith to move forward together, being able to face the world no matter what may come, and to do so hand in hand, arm in arm. Mostly it will take commitment to hold true to the journey you both have pledged to today. So, Eric, Jennifer, by the power vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may smooch your groom. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor, privilege, and pleasure to introduce for the first time ever on the planet Earth, Mr. and Mrs. Eric Basco. There are finger foods and cocktails in the house. Go celebrate. God bless you.